Ladies and gentlemen, the program is about to begin. Please take a moment to silence your mobile devices. We would like to remind you that food and drink are not permitted in the theater. Also, please note that photography and audio and video recording is prohibited. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Michelle Gray, the creative director of the New York Times live conversation series, Times Talks. For over 20 years, Times Talks has paired New York Times journalists with the brightest and boldest creative minds from the fields of art, politics, social justice, film, theater, and music. I'm delighted to welcome you to tonight's event with Misty Copeland, the first African-American female principal, principal dancer with the American Ballet Theater. One of the most famous dancers in the world, Copeland is credited with both broadening the audience for classical ballet and imbuing the art form with a renewed energy. This talk is a prelude to ABT's spring season, as well as a celebration of a special section of the New York Times dance photography that spans more than 100 years. Here to talk a little bit more about the Times collaboration with Copeland is my colleague, Veronica Chambers, the editor of Past Tense, the archival storytelling project at the New York Times. Please help me in welcoming Veronica Chambers to the stage. Hi. Six months ago, we began sifting through the six million photographs in the New York Times archives. Dance quickly emerged as one of the most enduring themes with photos that date back more than 100 years. Most of those photos are of ordinary people, and that's what you'll see tonight and in the special section, which runs on Sunday, but we have a few sneak peek copies outside. We also published iconic choreographers, portraits of iconic choreographers and professional dancers in part because it's in them that we find not just the highest elevation of the form, but a metaphor for possibility that extends far beyond the realm of dance. Oprah Winfrey, talking to the New York Times about Alvin Ailey's company in 1996, said much the same. She said, watching great dancers makes us feel better about ourselves, that you can live better, that you can fly. Anyone who has ever seen Misty Copeland dance knows that to watch her is to believe, even for just a few moments, that you too can fly. Misty will be interviewed tonight by Monica Drake. Monica is an assistant managing editor at the New York Times, where she manages special projects involving technology, emerging platforms, and narrative in innovation. Please welcome Monica Drake and Misty Copeland. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Yes, and thank you. Thank you, Misty, <laughs> for coming out tonight as well. Um, I also <coughs> would like to thank you for, for doing a little side gig as photo editor. Uh, <laughs> Misty came into the offices of the New York Times a few weeks ago and chose some of the photographs that we're going to look at tonight, uh, as well as some of the images that you're going to get in that special section that you should pick up on the way out if you didn't. That wasn't know. work. That was so much fun. <laughs> it was fun for yeah. me, too. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, so to, to kind of use the well-worn cliche, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is we have a lot of images. I have a lot of questions. We're going to use the the photography here as sort of a signpost to guide us through a discussion um, with you, mm -hmm. Misty, about your life, about your views on society and on dance, of course, as well. Um, we have plenty of, of photos of dancers in the Times' archives, um, but for our first photo, which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite a surprise, but for our first photo, we're not going to look at something so archival. It's in the, it's in the not so distant past. <laughs> if we want to cue up the first image here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what I said when I saw it, <laughs> which is why I chose yes. to embarrass okay. you by showing it. <laughs> Um, so just tell me a little about, a bit about this moment. But okay. first of all, I just want to set the scene for you here. Yeah. Like, 
this is 1995. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things were happening in the world. Coolio uh, was very popular. <laughs> Gangsta's Paradise was popular. I, saw it. I loved it. The OJ trial was, <laughs> yep, happening. was happening. Actually, I thought I think you're a Mariah fan, so I should I say am. that. I actually that was that on daydream. the same freeway when OJ was on the run. I am not kidding. What? I am not kidding. <laughs> but yes, I am a Mariah Carey fan. Yes. <laughs> Um, a lot was happening during that time. A lot was and happening. I, and I was also putting on my first pair of point shoes during that time. <laughs> and this and was the exact moment, the very first time I ever stood on point. And I'd been dancing for a couple of months, mm -hmm. I think two or three months, and my teacher was really documenting like every part of my journey because she just had never seen anything mm -hmm. like it, and she really wanted to... Um, be able to look back and show mm -hmm. me, you know, what was happening. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think I'm often that way, and mm -hmm. I am still to this day that I'm so present and in the moment that I'm not aware of like the uh, magnitude of things that are happening when they mm -hmm. are. So it was like she gave me these weird shoes, and I put them on. And I was like, cool. And I just like stood up on them, and she was just like, <laughs> how are you standing on your toes? You have no training. And I was just like. You know, <laughs> so you so had that moment. <laughs> so you hadn't really practiced it, or no? You... I, that, I literally, like, I'd never worn point shoes before, oh, and God. so she was. You know, I think a lot of a lot of what she experienced and, and documented through photographs and video, um, it was this innate whatever I had inside of me that she still to this day was like, I don't know how you knew to do certain things because I'd never seen ballet and I had never heard classical music. Um, and there was just something within me, you know, like I would hear the music from Don Quixote and I knew to like lift my chin and certain, she was like, how do you know to do this? I'm like, I don't know, it just feels right. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so tell me about this moment though. Did you feel like you had sort of met a challenge and succeeded or you really didn't appreciate the enormity of it? It, I, it was just like, it was a task and I uh -huh. wanted to accomplish it. You know, I've always been a perfectionist and um, just kind of wanted to, um, fit in mm -hmm. and I think that all of those things that you know I think held me back in my life as a child as you know one of six children in a single parent home um, just literally like I had no voice no identity and I didn't want to stand out in any way and all of those insecurities for some reason became strengths when I entered the ballet world um, and so it's just like fascinating to think of things that way. But I, I don't think I really thought anything of that moment. I was just like, I'm doing what she told me to do. And <laughs> here I am. <laughs> um, so when you were starting out, uh, was there a moment that you thought, oh, dance could be like a real thing for me to do? It was not a thought. It was told like it can be, so you have to decide. And that was I mean, within this time frame, I mean, I, it was within a couple of months that my teachers, you know, they knew that I was, I was 13. I, that's not, a, you know, common that you could get the training that I, that I would need you to become a professional in an elite company, which is what they saw for me. Um, and I had no idea what any of that meant. I'd never even seen a live performance before. Um, but they were telling me, like, if this is what you want to do, this is what it could be, you're going to have to come and live with us. And I was like, I don't know what any of this means, but I love what this thing is, ballet, and it makes me happy. I've never been a part of something that was, like, bigger than me or that made me feel important or beautiful. Um, and so I just said yes, even though I had no idea what it was I was really agreeing to. <laughs> so there wasn't really a time that it was, like, um, you know, a decision, really, but it was just, like, it was in a, a beautiful escape from a really hard life that I was experiencing. Okay. Um, so now we are going to move on to our first okay. archival photo. Um, it is <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah, I was actually talking about this photo this afternoon with a teacher of mine. Yeah, yeah. there's so much. There's so much happening. So much like that I was drawn to when mm -hmm. I saw this. Um, do you know the date? I can't remember what it was that this was, doesn't say it. Let me look at my well, notes. It's clearly not from 1987. Oh, 80s, okay. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that the initial thing that I was, was drawn to was how uncomfortable they all looked. 
<laughs> I know. So yeah, when I saw this yeah. photo, like, I thought, oh they... wow, this is really cute. It's Kids cute. are learning to dance. <laughs> right. And you were like, they, they look, look very <laughs> uncomfortable, Monica. <laughs> like when you think of dancers, especially at that age, you know, you see them like happy and looking, but they right. looked really awkward. And mm -hmm. I was like, I made me think more. And then you look deeper and it's like, these are brown kids. Doesn't look like they're in a proper ballet studio. Um, they're wearing pink tights and pink shoes, which to me that's like the epitome of like exclusion um, for ballet, for brown dancers in ballet. And so mm -hmm. it's just like, it's this like deep rooted thing, this like message that's being sent to brown dancers for years and years and years. Um, that we don't really talk about, but it affects us in a way. And so I feel like all of these things, you know, I think it was like an, maybe an outreach program at like a public mm -hmm. school or something, mm -hmm. but it's just really fascinating. Like one of the girls isn't even in ballet slippers. She's wearing like tennis shoes and socks. And these boys are wearing like, I don't know, little suits or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I don't know what that is. But it just says so much, I think, about the ballet world and how much it hasn't changed and how it, you don't feel like you're a part of it. And they look uncomfortable because we are not included in a way, you know, where it's as simple as like, mm -hmm. you belong, you can have brown skin, which the tights represent our skin color. So when you were starting out, this, you know, doing ballet felt mm -hmm. like sort of natural probably, and it, it felt did. like you were coming home in yeah. a way. But do you think that you had this feeling of exclusion even, even as you started? No. I you didn't, didn't internalize I mean, I it. I was very fortunate, I think, to literally be placed in this bubble that was like prepping me to become a professional in a way that most children don't experience. Um, I, not until I was a professional did I really, did that, all of that hit me and it was just like overwhelming. Um, but you know, growing up in Southern California in San Pedro mm -hmm. was like very diverse and I, I don't think there were a lot of black dancers in my school, but it mm -hmm. was a very diverse school. And it was the first time that I had an identity that I like connected with and that was ballerina. And me being black was never even a part of the equation. And I thank my teacher, Cynthia Bradley, for I think kind of shielding me from that so that I could develop and just focus on my training and the technique and my performing. And um, so I literally was just like blossoming and growing as a dancer and as an artist, not as a black dancer, which I think that it just it gave me kind of like a, a confidence that most black dancers don't have walking into a situation as a professional. Um, but at the same time, I think that my upbringing, you know, in conjunction with that prepared me for everything. There's no way had I not experienced all of the hardships that I could have walked into ABT and been a be like, been like, okay, now you're a black woman. I'm like, what? You know, and like, had I not experienced, you know, being raised that like you are a black woman, it doesn't matter that you're black, Italian, and German. That's how you're seen when you step out of the house. You have brown skin, and that's how you're going to be viewed. And so I think all of those things combined prepared me in some random, weird way to be where I am. <laughs> so, and you felt a, you felt the same sense of belonging when you came to New York. Um, I but did you in were, the beginning. <laughs> you're one of, um, I think you're the only black. Um, dancer of the 80, I think, in your class? No, what I'm actually, so when I first joined the company, mm -hmm. gosh, it's been like almost 20 years or something, it's crazy. <laughs> For the first 10 years of my career, I was the only black woman at mm -hmm. ABT, and mm -hmm. I don't think that, I think it was like maybe 10 years before I joined that there was another black woman, so it had mm -hmm. been a long time. Um, but. Uh, 10 plus years into my career, Courtney Levine joined, um, who's still in the company, um, and then Erica Lull, who is like one of my mentees, and she's now in the company with me. So um, there's three of us in a, mm -hmm. in a company of like 90 dancers. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's like the most I've w experienced in my career. That's amazing. Um, we're going to move on to um, another image. Okay. Um, this one, uh, which your reaction to it uh, surprised me. <laughs> like, oh, so, oh. do you remember this photo? <laughs> what was my reaction? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you think about um, how you find your footing and how mm -hmm. you uh, have a sense of belonging yeah. um, and the people you look up to and, and the mentors you found along the, the way and, and people you, you wanted to be like, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
I had a certain group of dancers in my head, but I didn't think about uh, Sally, Sally Wilson, mm -hmm. who was yeah, the first right. one. And so what drew you to her? You said you, you know, Sally sort of, Wilson, yeah. yeah, you sort of looked to her as she was a very um, sort of emotive dancer, maybe? Um, I think that it was like... And when did you discover who she, yeah. the, who all these dancers yeah. were? Um, it's so interesting. I, I think that because of, I think first of all, just being black in America, my experience has always been like I've been kind of um, searching for this like longing to uh, be a part of something that has tradition and history and that's so not what we have as black people in America. And I think that's what drew me to ballet is to belong to something that has like <clears throat> this amazing like passed down knowledge and that's shared and that connects you with people. Um, and so when I moved to New York City, I was actually living with Isabel Brown, who is like a part of this dynasty of ballet dancers. Um, Leslie Brown is her daughter, who was the star of The Turning Point. She's a principal dancer with American Ballet Theater. Um, her son, Ethan Brown, was a soloist with American Ballet Theater. So I ended up living in this like legendary like apartment. And, you know, and the, the movie Turning Point was like loosely based on her life. And she had this like sh bookshelf. And when she would leave, I think I was like 17, 18. When she would leave the apartment, I would like open the door and I would sneak into the hallway and I would just go through all the books. And she <laughs> had like every program from the time that ABT like started. And so I just learned about the history of all of these dancers that came through ABT and Sally was one of them. So it was just like very interesting to like be like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I think that's just like something that means so much to me to be a part of something that has just so much story and love and history, um, you know, that it's not about what you look like or the color of your skin, but that you're all a part of this special language that is dance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do you feel like you sort of have taken, um, you know, icons like this and, and <laughs> emulated them? And how, how have they sort of informed your performances? Yeah, um, I just think that I've kind of, felt like everything that I am is kind of like a product of things that I've seen or the influences that I have. And so having mentors like that means so much to me. Like it's not about, um, you know, being the best or being better or whatever. It's about, I think, um, you know, giving back to those that got you to this place. And so I think that's, again, is what's so incredible about ballet in particular is that that's so ingrained in the culture, you know, mm -hmm. passing down knowledge and, 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 and kind of mentoring in a way that's not really talked about. Hmm. Um, How does that, what do you mean? Um, I mean, there, yes, there's, there's dance notation. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of film and footage, you know, mm -hmm. beyond a certain point when there was no cameras and videos, um, that you're really just relying on the memory of dancers that you know have worked with the choreographer that created it on them in whatever time. And it's literally just passed down like by word and by like visual. And to me, that's like so incredible. And there's like nothing else like that in the world today, that you're literally just relying on being in this very intimate space in a studio and just listening to the person's experience of what they you know, <laughs> felt or what they think that choreographer's intentions were and then making it your own. And it's just a very special thing that is rare. Okay. Um, that kind of leads us <gasps> mm -hmm. <Just> <laughs> to this photo. I think it's a yeah. good segue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, 1957. Yeah. Um, and you said before you looked at our photos, you, you hadn't realized that, um, you know, he was dancing for the Jeffrey. Metro. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffy Holder. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Je sorry, I didn't say his name. This is Jeffy Holder, everyone. Um, that he had danced for the Metropolitan Opera. Yeah. Like, no, and, I mean, and, there's, there's so much, uh, I would say, black dance history that mm -hmm. we just don't know about. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's so much a part of um, what I've taken on as my responsibility to do the research and share the knowledge because there's, it's just, it's really insane to me that there's no document, no real documentation or something that's in one place where we can learn about black dancers and, and what they've done, where they've danced, the dates, like their accomplishments. And it's insane to me. And that's something that I w I'm working on um, <laughs> that I would love to just have like a, a, a history book 
<laughs> for black dancers, you know, that, that mm -hmm. we can continue to grow and change, but mm -hmm. just to have something tangible because it's just really insane that we don't know about, I mean, I didn't know about my history as a black dancer. Mm -hmm. I had to go out there and do that research on my own and, mm -hmm. and find, you know, out who these people were. And then mm -hmm. it just kind of opened up my eyes and expanded like what I feel my, like what's possible right. and, um, and what my voice could do to bring more diversity into ballet. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I saw an interview recently when you were talking about finding um, mentors, um, and you mentioned uh, Raven Wilkinson. Yes. And can you talk about your discovery of her and how that yeah. happened? Yeah, Which, it's, it's really insane, again, that like you can't, you know, I grew up again, not that it was a long time, I only trained for I think two or three years with my first teacher. And I mean, I was just studying so many videos that were like the history of ballet. And, I, I wasn't even a question in my mind. I didn't think about it. I wasn't like looking for a black dancer. I was just so fascinated with this new love of mine, ballet. Um, but you know, looking back on it, it was like it was all white dancers. I mean, I think Elaine Kudo, um, who was a Twyla Tharp dancer and then was a soloist at the American Ballet Theater. I think she was probably the one dancer of color that like I saw as an Asian woman. Um, but it's just. Um, it's just crazy that that's like what is presented to us. So I, I think I had just, I, I was injured. I don't know, I've had a lot of injuries. I was <laughs> injured, I was at home on my couch and I like turned the TV on like PBS or something. And, um, and this documentary of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo was on and I'm like, okay, this ballet documentary, I'll watch it. And then this <laughs> black woman comes onto the screen and, she, and I was just like stunned. Not that I didn't know black dancers existed, mm -hmm. like black, but I mean, I did, and I like, I don't think I ever truly felt a connection because it's like, okay, I see this image of Lauren Anderson on the cover of Dance Magazine when I'm 15, and it's like, stops you in your tracks, but then that's it. You don't mm -hmm. know any, I don't know anything else. And um, when just hearing Raven speak and, and speak about her, uh, what she had gone through, um, you know, and this was in the 1950s, and, and having to leave the company that she was with because the KKK were threatening her life. Um, and it was like, I mean, clearly it's not that severe, but I'm in the same situation, and it's the 1950s. And it was just like, it just opened up my eyes in a way that like, I don't know where I would be if I had not learned of her story, but everything just clicked. And it was just like, my purpose is so much bigger than just being a dancer in ABT. Like I saw it in this really just <laughs> clear way. Um, and then, you know, we ended up, I ended up meeting her. She lived around the corner from me all these years and I had no idea. <laughs> and she was supporting me and coming to my performances and we became really close friends. And having her in my life, I think just like, just made me into the artist and the woman that I am and just kind of broadened like um, <laughs> my views and, and wanting to, um, learn more about our history as black dancers. Um, what experiences, and she, she passed recently about yes. four months ago, yeah. so um, I know you were close to her, so yes. I'm sorry for that. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, what did she tell you, or what piece of advice did she give you that, like, I mean, she probably gave you a million. So much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was one of the most um, mm -hmm. sort of useful moments you shared with her? Um, there was just never, there was never anything that made her, anything was possible in her eyes. It doesn't hmm. matter what, what's in your way, what roadblocks, like that was her life. Like I feel like, you know, now looking back and, and listening to, you know, I, she was in the documentary that I did with Nelson George about Lorena's Tale and just looking at footage that wasn't released in that and just seeing like, wow, I think it was so much worse and deeper than she ever put on, like what she experienced in her life and the fact that she was who she was and just never sh like shied away. Like she was like, I'm a black woman, I'm a black ballerina, I'm never going to deny that to, to be able to dance. Hmm. Um, she knew who she was and it was just such, it influenced me in so many ways that like, you don't have to feel sorry for yourself. Like, mm. you know, like we all, we all are going through things and it's what you make of those situations. Um, and she just always said to me, like, you know, just like be happy, um, go on stage and love what you do. And, and, um, and she just always let me know that she was there with me. This was mm -hmm. like from day one that I met her, she mm -hmm. would talk to me on the phone before every single performance. <laughs> and she would say, let me be the wings at your back or oh the wind God. at your back. And, and, and it was just like, 
<laughs> but that's just who she was, mm -hmm. and, I, and I always felt that. And mm -hmm. I and I and it's not just her. I feel that with every black dancer that mm -hmm. I think has paved this way for me to be here is that like I'm in a position now where I can give back to them what they deserve and what they didn't get for so many years, mm -hmm. and it just means so much to me to be in this position to be able to um, be dancing for all of them. Amazing. <laughs> So in a way, you're kind of discovering the community that you didn't know about yeah. when you're starting. Yes, for, it's, it's incredible. For this generation. It's, yeah, this it's generation. incredible. Um, so one question I have, I'm going to move on to okay. the next photo. Um, <laughs> And then I'm gonna not cry. Oh, we cry. didn't talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyways. Yeah. Well, oh. No. No. Did we? We're we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is this Paul Taylor? No. Who is this? Um, this is um, this, Wait, who is this is Jose Limon. Oh, okay. And yes. Oh, and yes. yes, yes. yes. So we're, we're, as while we're talking about learning yes. and learning how to dance and the uh, and the struggles that you had, um, sort of. Um, we, this picture is a great example. You, you thought of the way that you learned how to dance. Can you talk about it a yeah. little bit? I mean, I think that um, it's not common, that, especially in ballet, um, mm -hmm. that you're working with um, a ballet master, a ballet mistress, mm -hmm. a coach, teacher, whatever, that can really physically show you what they want. And so mm -hmm. I just thought this was like really fascinating to, you know, it's, it's such a different experience when a teacher or a choreographer can take from like what's in their mind, their vision, their ideas, and physically show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. Like that's not always the case, especially in ballet, because mm -hmm. you're doing ballets that were created in like the early 1900s, and you're like, you don't really know what, you're just trying to imitate what these other dancers, you know, mm -hmm. learned mm -hmm. from the original. Um, so it's, it's not always the same experience of mm -hmm. actually working with a choreographer in front of you who can demonstrate. And, um, and so it reminded me of like Alexei Ratmansky, mm. um, who when he first came on as um, resident choreographer at American mm. Ballet Theater, mm. he was, I think he was like in his early 40s or late 30s. Mm -hmm. He was pretty young. And he was like, I mean, to this day, he still can like do more physically than I can. I'm like, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> like, this is too much. Um, but it's just, it's a different experience mm -hmm. when someone can really show you physically what they want mm -hmm. and so it's just like a special experience and, and it seemed that way like even just this woman here who's not doing the pose that everyone else is doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> and how but how she's like really just like looking at him and observing like you know what it is he's doing like mm -hmm. that's an amazing thing to be able to see and witness and since you started out fairly like a little later than a lot of dancers yeah. is that the way that you learned yes um, yes Absolutely. Um, I've always been a visual learner. Um, mm. I think in my life before ballet, like it's just, and it, you know, it's interesting and fascinating that um, when I think about like the arts and, and public schools and everything and just how, you know, I was kind of, you know, like any other kid growing up in, you know, the environment I did and I was in a public school and it was just mm. like, we all have to learn the same way. And it's like, that's not possible. <laughs> Our brains don't all work the same way. And I think that, you know, I survived and I, kind of thrived because I had like this way of literally memorizing the words on the page and hmm. passing my tests or getting good grades and then it was all gone. Like I wasn't hmm. learning anything. <laughs> and it wasn't until it wasn't until dance till ballet that I realized that that was like what I needed to be able to understand things in a different way. Like that was what helped me to learn. It was what helped me to be able to articulate myself um, physically, like verbally like you know most people when they're which is very offensive as a black woman when they're like oh you speak so well <laughs> and they're like where did you go to college I'm like no I didn't and I think that ballet has given me the tools and arts to be able to become the woman that I am and learn mm -hmm. in the way that I needed to hmm. and um, but yes I was always a visual learner which mm -hmm. I think helped me to progress so quickly in ballet mm -hmm. I, I mean what it, it's impossible to do to learn to do ballet in four years because because it has to be so ingrained in your muscle memory. But physically, like my teachers would show me things and I could mimic them. <laughs> 
I mean, it, you know, so it, it you... worked for, for a while. It got me into ABT, where I literally was just like imitating what I saw, but there was no real like strength and um, stamina and consistency behind it. But it's always been a strength of mine, yeah. So did you um, sort of remember how to do things without, um, before you remembered even what they were called? Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I knew how to do like everything, like I could, watch and see, but I didn't know what half the vocabulary was at all. You know, like, even when I got to ABT, the, mm -hmm. there literally was still, there were still steps I hadn't learned. Mm -hmm. Like, there was, like, it, it was really insane. I mean, I think that it wasn't something that I was, like, forthcoming with, like, yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of like, oh, my God, just trying to fit in, which <laughs> I didn't. I was only black woman. And then I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I, re <laughs> I remember going to San Francisco Ballet. I think I'd been dancing for a year and a half, and they gave me a full scholarship, and they put me in the wow. highest level. I was 15. Mm -hmm. And everyone was just kind of like, okay, how's this gonna go? Like, you've only been dancing for a year and a half. I hope you can like fake it through the summer. <laughs> and, um, you know, because physically I could mm -hmm. do what they asked of me, but then mm -hmm. once the program actually started, it was kind of like, well, you don't really know anything, do you? <laughs> but I was so fortunate that I had this amazing teacher, mm -hmm. um, Lola Diavola, who was in, in charge of the school, and she would take my hand and she would pull me to the front. And she would like tell me like as the dancers were dancing, she was like, "That's what this is called, and oh, this wow. is what this is called." And I remember learning to do like a ton de cuisse for the first time. And I got home and I was like, "I know what a ton de cuisse is." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, learning all these new things, but yeah, it was. So was that a, so that was in San Francisco? San Francisco Ballet, okay. yeah. Wow. When I was okay. fifteen, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go into the next image. It's also this is also sort of about learning uh, visually. Um, yeah. Oh. This I is one this. of your favorites, and it's one of mine, too. I love it, yeah. This is, let me get the information right. Okay. Um, this is in 1925. Um, it's amazing. And it's just, it's just so, there we go. Um, Albertina Roche with members of her troupe on mm -hmm. top of the new. And this is her troupe. This yeah. is the woman yeah. on the left, yes. Yeah. Uh, on top of what was then the new Steinway building. We were very excited about this <laughs> impressive building. Yeah, I mean. So what was your first guess when you saw this? Well, thought, I felt like it was like, um, it looked like a photo that I've probably taken many times on a rooftop. Like it just <laughs> felt, it felt very like alive and very relevant and, um, yeah, it, it just didn't feel like an older image. It was just mm -hmm. like, powerful and had, I mean, just, it's gorgeous. Like the clouds in the back and it looks like there's like a castle. It's not a castle, but it's just like this <laughs> crazy, like, um, you just feel the like life and richness through the photo, which I think is what makes a photo amazing. And, and you said when you saw this picture that it kind of, at a certain point, you rely on photos like this. Mm -hmm. Um, to learn. So yeah. um, is this part of your routine of sort of <laughs> <laughs> learning new roles or learning, um, you know? I think it was more so in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, as I've matured and, and especially since I've become a principal dancer, you know, you, well, I've always, I think, relied on um, kind of like the drama and the acting of roles that mm -hmm. really um, made them come to life for me. It was never just about the technicality of things, clearly, because I didn't even know the technique. <laughs> so I was really just like inventing and creating. And so doing research and mm -hmm. um, you know figuring out what era ballet is in and, mm -hmm. and the surrounding characters and how you fit in with that. And so yes, yeah, seeing images or seeing footage is extremely important for me to really understand what it is I want to do. <laughs> Um, but this just, I just, it has so much energy and, and says so much. And to me, it's like a timeless photo. Like it doesn't look like there's like any time on it. <laughs> um, and, and this is another one of yours that's, that's. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Um... So, as, you know, the intro was all about sort of creating the illusion of flight. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's just. I think that it says a lot about the photographer because if you know photography, like especially when a dancer is, dance, dancing is really difficult to photograph 
and I feel like a lot of people think they can. <laughs> and dancers will always look and be like, oh, why? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think that it's, you know, about, like, where you are and levels, mm -hmm. whether you're jumping or you're standing on points or, mm -hmm. um, but the way this is captured, like, it, it has so much energy where it literally looks like you're, wa it's not like a frozen pose to me. Like, it looks like you can see just, like, this energy that they're all, like, flying. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, like, the perfect angle and again like it doesn't look like it's like frozen in time and then it was also fascinating to see like this one little brown girl in the middle there mm -hmm. which I was just like mm -hmm. what's happening here what 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 year is it like where are they it looks like they're in a prison like <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's happening but it was just really yeah. fascinating so this was yeah. Connecticut College for Women. I think there's, there's two yeah. black there's two, dancers. Yeah. Yeah. This is Connecticut College for Women in 1948. 1948. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about how like you create it's kind of effort. Like they look like they're yeah, flying. Right. Like it looks like right. the, they and just sort of levitated. Yeah. Yeah, no. um, yeah. I mean, I've definitely learned again, like because I started the way that I did and I, I learned like, I don't want to say they're tricks, but like illusion, like things that will help you to, um, I think had I learned the correct t technique from a young age, I wouldn't have to do these things, but I mm -hmm. did learn. Um, for instance, when jumping, that you're always going to want to like um, anticipate where your arms are going to be before your body and your legs get there. And then when you land, mm -hmm. keep them, keep your arms and your upper body there. So it looks as if you're already in the air before you are. And when you land, you still uh -huh. are in the air. Okay. So it's like you're creating an image in a jeté before you take off and then you mm -hmm. land and you're still in the jeté. So mm -hmm. I, those are like little tricks, tricks mm -hmm. or whatever that you, that I feel like help you to mm -hmm. have that illusion that you are flying. And are those tricks, those are tricks that you kind of discovered or learned? Learned taught? from amazing people. Irina Kolpakova, who's mm, been my okay. ballet mistress at American Ballet Theater for my entire career. Yeah. And she has the most incredible gems that, mm -hmm. you know, she shares. And she's another one that I just adore. And I love my like older people. Like, I'm like, it's really bad. I've had, like, all my friends are like over 70. And then I'm just like. <laughs> Yeah. You're one of those um, <laughs> seniors trapped in a 30-something. <laughs> You're an old soul. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll try that next time. I'm okay. going to try someone like do that. <laughs> Arms first. Arms first. <laughs> um, this is... Oh, this so so we're awesome. going to sort of transition from okay. talking about um, you know, more formal dance yeah. to, to spontaneous yes. and informal dance. Yeah. And this like kind of immediately grabbed you yeah. for just, just, I mean, it's a great every, photo. It's, it's like perfect to me. Like the way that the flag like is like waving and like how it's placed and then like the movement of like you can, of her skirt, the shadows, like uh, you can just see like the, the pride mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, just like what the culture and dance means for them. It just like said so much, but it's like not super complicated, but mm -hmm. there's just so much like flow and energy in this still photo, like again with the flag and with her skirt. Mm -hmm. That's really amazingly captured. Um, and it does feel like there's a lot of emotion there. I, um, can, can, do you think about the ways in which, um, you know, even uh, performing dances that have <laughs> And endured for a while that you you feel like you've sort of contributed your sense of pride and, and your identity and how did you do it? Wow, um, I mean I I feel like I try to to bring that to whatever it is that I'm doing. I mean again I think it's difficult when you're in an art form where your culture has never been embraced and your stories aren't being told through these ballets. So it's a little bit difficult to really do that, um, but. Yeah, I think I tried to bring something from within my own experiences and in and, and my life to whatever it is I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a specific role. I don't know, so I'm, I'm actually, Paul Taylor, um, who I knew, um, and he passed away not yeah. too long ago as well. Mm -hmm. um, he, before he passed, he invited me to be a guest artist with his company to perform in a, in a, in a a show that I actually, it's like one of my favorite pieces that he's ever made, it's called Black Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, just like that type of, of movement that's kind of like soulful and human, like it's, 
it's much easier to connect with than mm -hmm. it is to connect with like a fairy or a swan <laughs> or a bird, you know? And oh, so you're like, a swan. <laughs> I mean, you find yeah, ways yeah, to connect course. with those creatures yeah. too, but like, you know, it's, it's like, it's amazing like, to see like real people and be motivated and, and influenced by like the spirit or whatever it is you see in something as simple as like an image like this, that you mm -hmm. can try and, you know, emulate whatever that is that, you know, representing their race and their culture and I think it's just important to like do the research and understand what it is you're doing when you step onto the stage and you're you know representing something that you're not. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, and, the, and this one is also yeah. super emotive. Like there's now we're a lot like transitioning. Going on into I know we're transitioning into the <laughs> sort of deep. like more social yeah. Yeah. which I think is so interesting just that um, what an influence it has, like these kind of social dance settings mm -hmm. and the images that we see and how much it really influences the dance culture. Um, that it, you know, you think about different times and how whatever the dances were of that time, they really did reflect and, and um, influence like the classical or formal dances. Um, but there was just something about this that was like, it was so intimate and just said so much with like the body language and her mm -hmm. eyes, the placement of her hand. It was just like, I felt like I was like, I shouldn't be here. Like <laughs> I'm looking in on someone's like intimate time, but it was just like really powerful. Like the emotion that you saw in this image, but like her eyes, like it's really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, this was um, 1964 and it was at this um, place where people, grown-ups could hang out and dance. Um, grown-ups. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a grown and sexy party. Um, <laughs> so, um, and you also said that, you know, you felt <laughs> <laughs> like I <I'm> so relate. <laughs> um, you also said that it, you you know looking at this was striking because you felt like people you know it's like slow dancing. Is yeah, almost right. A yes. relic too, right. right. Yeah, that like you don't see people dancing like this anymore, and it's so incredible. And I feel like unless you're again like a part of um, you know like dance in a way that whether it's ballroom or ballet or more, mm -hmm. just, like boys and girls don't experience that type of like intimacy and closeness, you know, and it's looked at as like, oh, it's awkward or, you know, and I think that it builds this further distance and like understanding each other um, mm -hmm. from different mm -hmm. genders. But mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's just like amazing that that was normal. It's like you went to a dance and you like slow dance. You weren't just like, um, I don't know, twerking or something. You were like, <laughs> like you know, like it was, it's like- the it, floss. <laughs> I've been trying to learn the floss. I don't know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I think it's just like amazing to think of like that time. And, and I'm sure that like the, their parents were like, what are you doing? Like they're too, get your hips away from each other. So, but like, it's just like, it's just interesting to see these things evolve and, and mm -hmm. but to be able to like hold on to that. Right. Um, this is also, yeah. Amazing. It's amazing. This yeah. is men at Jacob's Pillow in the yeah. 30s. And, so cool. Um, you know, speaking of things that we don't see all the time. A lot of men dancing together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't happen yeah, as much it doesn't, anymore. Yeah. Um, it's like one of my favorite things to see. Um, Why is that? I, I, there's just something that I think especially like in America, to be able to have like a group of, of male dancers on the stage and to see how powerful it is and kind of, you know, um, go against what people, most Americans think of male dancers. And to me, it's just like- it's, Do you think it's, they think of male dancers as what, effeminate or- Yeah, yeah that okay. like it's not something that you should do if you like, are a man or masculine. I'm like, honey, they are more man than most men are. <laughs> but like, but it's just so powerful. I don't think I ever really thought of it in any way, but I just remember like my first years in the company and seeing like um, certain pieces that it was just kind of like, I didn't have words or anything, but it just like affected me. I just think that it's, it's incredible. I, you know, whether it's seeing a group of women or seeing a group of men, like it's, it's just um, it's just amazing, I think, to see all of these the strength, but like the different like varieties in the body and how they they present their personalities and their different strengths and and grace, and it's just like a really cool thing to witness because you don't see it that often. 
And I this think it might have been Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake that I saw when I was 15. That hmm. was the first time it was all men, an wow. all male cast of Swan mm -hmm. Lake. Um, that was the first time that it was just kind of like, whoa, this is crazy. And I think that was kind of like the start of my fascination. <laughs> oh, really? So you didn't know that it was, when you were watching it, were you just expecting it or just? Um, I don't know what kind of I thought. Surprise. It was just like cool. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, these are supposed to be women that are swans. No, it was just like, they're swans and mm -hmm. it's crazy and they're all moving in unison. It didn't matter that they were men. It was just like <laughs> amazing. Um, are there any other sort of, um, you know, this is an, a sort of almost an underrepresented image, right? And um, for, you know, yeah. black dancers, I would consider underrepresented. Right. Um, are there any other images that you think the, the dance world could benefit from seeing more of? Um, I mean, of course, like, a, I think we have one that's probably coming up, but like mm -hmm. a group of black dancers, of course, that's mm -hmm. like, like so extremely powerful and rare to find like a photo with like all black dancers or even mm -hmm. if it's like a, a company and you see like two black dancers, mm -hmm. like you don't just don't often see that representation of like that it's okay to have diversity and that like be, by seeing different shades, it's mm -hmm. not like ruining the image or the line mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I think it's the same when you see like a group of men because mm -hmm. it's just always within like American culture and, and in the dance world, mm -hmm. it's always just like, it's insanely hard to find men. So it's mm -hmm. always just like, you get a scholarship and you get a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's right. like so hard to get them to, to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, you were recently, I don't know uh, exactly when this was, but you did dance with a black male dancer, right? Yes. In the last, so that Yes, with was, Calvin Royale. Yeah, yes. yeah. So <laughs> speaking of images that you don't see very yeah, often. Yeah, that's one of them, is not seeing two black dancers to dancing together mm -hmm. um, and that's you know I think that it naturally has happened this way but throughout my career I, again I haven't been fortunate enough to have many black dancers come into ABT while I was there but the majority of them that have come and gone have been male black male dancers um, and you know it's just since after my 10 year mark when Courtney mm -hmm. came and then Calvin did and we have Gabe Share and we have um, Jose Sebastian and Erica Lull. So we've got like a nice group of like, you know, maybe five or six brown dancers, which I'm like, yes, <laughs> like, you know, to be able to like talk to them and encourage them and maybe make things easier for them because of all the experiences that I have. But it's been important for me to like give them opportunities and not just because they have brown skin, but because mm -hmm. they're talented. And Calvin has been like, he's just stunning. Mm -hmm. Like he's stunning. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because most black male dancers are seen as I think black males are seen in the world as like this kind of like overly aggressive masculine, like you can't be soft, you can't be a prince, you can't be loving. And and you look at Calvin, I'm just like, he is a prince. Like there's no <laughs> denying it, doesn't matter how chocolate his skin is. Mm -hmm. And so that's just how I've always seen him and I think he's insanely mm -hmm. gifted. And so whenever I have an opportunity where I'm outside of ABT doing mm -hmm. a gig or, you know, um, recently I uh, shot the Pirelli calendar and I mm -hmm. asked Calvin to be in it with me. Mm -hmm. I just think that that image of like, like for, for young people to see like two black dancers together is so powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just something that I'm continuing to try and like push mm -hmm. and, and you know, having the opportunity to do Swan Lake with the Washington Ballet, with mm -hmm. Brooklyn Mac was also mm -hmm. like a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there had been a black dancers that had, had danced parts of Swan Lake and I know that Dance Suit of Harlem was one of them, but never the full length. And so for Brooklyn and I to be able to have that opportunity in Washington DC to do that together, it's just such a powerful image and it shouldn't be, um, it should be normal. <laughs> Yeah. It shouldn't be like, oh, let's do black dancers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of, I mean, visually, I think yeah. it was kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, you're right, it should be normal. It, feel, it felt revolutionary. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about um, informal cool. dance yeah. with this one. Yeah. This, this kind of that. looks like a fashion shoot, oh, but it's I not. I love it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is um, in Midtown oh, um, at a place called The Scene. Uh-huh. 
And <laughs> why did you like this photo? Again, like, there's just, like, something about, like, the way that, like, they're looking at, like, the way this girl is, like, she's just, like, in it. She's, like, doing her own thing. She doesn't care. And, like, it's just, like, interesting to see, like, the dynamic between all the different people. But also, um, it's it's been something that I've been kind of studying. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a, yeah, I'm a <laughs> I'll move forward to okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I've, there's uh, a ballet that she created. I don't know. It was in the '80s, I think. Deuce Coupe, um, which is to all uh, Beach Boys music. And I actually did a part of the ballet when I was like 17. Oh, really? Yeah, it's so weird. When I was in American Ballet Theater Studio Company, mm -hmm. and she actually came and worked with us. And mm -hmm. like, I've been working with Twyla since I was sixteen. Hmm. So actually, just came from her house right now, and like, Ty, oh, really? doing amazing. <laughs> She's like so incredible. Um, but there was just uh, trying to, you know, this piece was created in in a in a way that you know you're supposed to be dancing like you're in a social setting gathering in like the 50s and 60s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do they move? And I think there was just something about that image and like the way the upper body was so like, kind of like um, erect and, uh, and like the way that she was like just holding her hands. I'm like, we don't move that way. I've got to figure out how to do this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, even like my husband's mother, I'm like, show me how to do, do it. And she's like, oh my God, I get to like show you how to dance. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just something, again, I think of that the way that right. I grew up and the way that my generation, this generation like moves, it's like so isolated within like the hips. Hmm. And that, like, that's not how they danced, mm. I think, mm. but from what I've seen. <laughs> um, but, like, it was so, like, kind of controlled here, and mm -hmm. it was, like, this understated, like, sensuality. So it wasn't just like, yeah, I'm grinding, <laughs> you know? But it was just like, I'm, I'm sexy, and, like, I don't have to, like, you know, it's for me. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like, a, it was, like, really fascinating, because I'm like, oh, I need more of these images to mm -hmm. study before I do this. <laughs> part in Deuce Coot because it's like, I don't want to look like I'm trying. I just want to be oh, like just have it be. a cool, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting, though. <laughs> um, it's kind of exciting to hear about learning new, um, it is. just new approach. I mean, I think that it's, yeah, yeah, I think that, like, I wish that more children were, like, a part of things like this, you know, mm -hmm. where it just kind of like expanded their mm -hmm. minds and, mm -hmm. and they could learn about different times and different cultures and, you know, and, and so I, I'm just, I appreciate being mm -hmm. able to like dive into doing these different works that allow mm -hmm. me to do research and, yeah. and learn more um, and appreciate different things and so I'm just, I've always been so happy and mm -hmm. fortunate and lucky to be a part of like the ballet world. Right. Um, I have just a couple more questions before we okay. go to oh. the audience for questions. Oh. But we're, we're, the, we are in so our more funny. recent archives, <laughs> um, yeah, meaning so like two years ago. Yeah, this um, was like last year, wasn't it? It's in, this it says not, it's this 2017. Was last, this was says, last fall. Or maybe it was last fall. Maybe yeah. we had the, I don't we know. Might have I never know what wrong day it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I thought this was interesting because, um, because of your story about it. I mean, yeah, I think we, right. you know, we think about you at this, stage of your career and think that all of the struggle is like, oh, it's you never know, over. <laughs> is behind you. Yeah, so tell no. me what was going on Oh my here. God, this is so funny. I, <laughs> this is um, a ballet that Jessica Lang um, created. I cannot recall the name of it. Something blue, garden blue. That sam I sounds know. good. Okay. I'm it's sure, that's so, what yeah, it's that's called. A, it's not on the card, but it seems like it's <laughs> Something that. like that. Um, <laughs> and in the midst of rehearsals, like you can see those like wooden, there, there are these big like kind of wooden slat things that we were like moving around during the piece, but um, we're running it and I'm like running around like this and I like bashed my finger into the wood and I think I like probably broke it or sprained it and everyone saw a doctor but I <laughs> my whole finger was like taped up so like everyone was just laughing because like I was just like this while I was dancing <laughs> and I was just like I can't look at you and then like the New York Times shows up one day I'm like great like I've got my, my guns out um, <laughs> and then like I was like this is gonna be like this like photo that's gonna like live on forever and then here I am. Like time's talk and there's my like taped up finger and like You're welcome. <laughs> but I think that what's um, so interesting about this photo is this is James Whiteside who I adore. Mm -hmm. Um, is like the difference in a lot of the photos we've been looking at um, and seeing like a black woman and a, and a 
white man next to each other. He's gay. And like, it's just like a different energy, you know, like with mm -hmm. this day and age and how we are in the studio and how the ballet world is. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it. I just don't, we, to me, like look like we're just like equals. Like we're mm -hmm. two dancers. There's no gender, there's no age, there's no color. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to end really quickly on this photo because oh. this is like just symbolic of um, you know what you're doing um, in in dance, and um, I'm so happy that you could share some of your thoughts with this audience and that you're mentoring the next generation. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> without uh, further ado, I think there's some. Um, Microphones, uh, I really can't see the audience, but there's some microphones that ushers are um, <laughs> circulating and are happy to answer questions. Oh, um, I love this photo. It's, it's really <laughs> wonderful. Those are some students from Dance Theater of Harlem. I think, no, wait, no, it wasn't. It was, um, sorry, it was not Dance Theater of Harlem. Harlem School of the Arts, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, Harlem. <laughs> um, there. Okay, I see hands up, kind of. My niece has a question for you. Oh, okay. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emma Francis. I'm nine years old, and I want to ask you, how did you find your confidence? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> um, I think that it was by having um, amazing support, like mentors and people that I trusted, that believed in me. Like, I think that's what gave me the confidence to believe in myself, was like knowing that I was good enough, that I was enough, that um, it didn't matter how different I was than the people around me. Um, having that support and, and, and encouragement just um, made me feel that like, yes, I do belong here. <laughs> I'm sorry, also she made you a card. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey, um, hi, my name is Elise, I am 10 hi. years old. And my question is, what motivated you to keep on doing ballet through hard times? Oh. Um, That's a good question. I, I mean, I feel like, the, yeah, I feel like the, it's like I'm going to have the same answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Like mentors, mentors, music, mentors. <laughs> um, that I think that like when I was um, going through difficult times, it was, you know, whether it was my husband, who at the time was my boyfriend, um, you know, and just having, having not only black women in my life that supported me, but black men as well. And I think my husband, Olu, was definitely first and foremost that for me. Um, Prince was definitely one of those mentors and, and people that just really um, made me feel that like, again, like I think that so much of what he was was like accepting or embracing not being like everyone else. Hmm. And I think that that made me look at things in a completely different way. When you have so much respect for someone and for their art and for the the confidence they have to like do something that's not like anyone else has done before, um, I think that all of that support allowed me to push through. Um, as, I mean, I think that all of the little First of all, like this is the next generation of dancers that are looking to me, whether they be black, white, brown, whatever, mm -hmm. that they can they look at me as a ballerina, not as a black ballerina. Mm -hmm. But also the little brown boys and girls. Like to see all like, you know, the support that I've gotten over the years and like to see them in the audience, like it's just like I never imagined in my life that I would see this. You know, mm -hmm. to see a line stretched out in the front of the Met of brown people in their little brown girls and boys, mm -hmm. and like this is absolutely insane and to me like that's what's kept me going on those days and I'm like I think my legs broken but I'm gonna do this one show because it might encourage someone to like start ballet or you know and, but like the yeah the support of so good evening hi, hi. 
Um, so I'm super excited to be here. And so I want to first thank you for everything that you do and everything that you bring, not only to the African-American community, but to the world. Thank like, you. so you, you really rock. Thank you. So I'm an educator um, at a college now, but I was a teacher in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And very often I would dance at the Harlem School of the Arts and just, ex mm -hmm. you know, bring a broader horizon to the, to the girls in which I serve, the underprivileged girls who families don't have the money usually to take them to see ballets and dances. And so we would often be encouraged to practice modern dance or tap dance. And so I would honestly try to expose them to ballet. So I want to compliment you. In my office last year, I had your calendar, and you were so beautiful. But, um, so you have this quote here that says, I will what I want, and constantly and consistently, I'm encouraging uplifting the girls in my life um, to will what they want. So I wanted to thank you. Thank you. That's incredible. Yeah. That's what it's all for. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, 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 like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I also have to say thank you, too. Um, I'm coming back from an injury, um, that, and I reached out to my mentor, and she gave you as an example, and mm -hmm. as someone who healed from a heart injury. And so I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you. Um, women like you, um, Wendy Whalen, I find as a dancer, um, <laughs> the evolution. You mentioned a lot of things are evolving, and the reality is, is as a woman, I know we evolve as dancers, and we're always going to be dancers. You have so many projects outside what you're doing with ABT. Is there any project that you're dying to get your hands on? Because I've seen your <laughs> books, you're talking about your history. Uh, oh you know, you're really. Is there anything you want to tap into that you haven't tapped into? Yes. Yet? There's so much. <laughs> um, you know, I think that what I've, uh, thank you, and I hope that you heal and get better. You're back? Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, I think that uh, that's why I've stayed kind of motivated. I think within my, like, what I do is, is finding different things that, um, encourage me and, and help me to grow. And so I feel like I just could never just kind of be sit still and just like be complacent, um, that there's always something that's going to like, um, bring me to like the next level of person I want to be. Um, but I, I have more books that I'm working on. I have a production company that I've had for a while now that we're actually like starting to do things. Um, and it's, it's just really exciting, I think, to be like a, an authentic voice um, within the dance world to create film, whatever it is, in a way that truly represents us and gives back and uses actual dancers to do these things. Like, I think all of that is so powerful and important. I think that's what's gonna bring ballet to more people. Um, I think that film is so powerful. Uh, I have my spring season at Mary Malley Theater that's coming up, <laughs> where I'm, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I've, again, like, I've been in the company for a very long time, but it's still exciting when you, you know, whether you're taking on new roles or you're approaching a role that you've been dancing for many years and you find new ways of looking at it. Um, but I'm going to be dancing a, a ballet that I never in a million years thought I would be doing the lead in, Manon, so I will be doing the role of Manon, um, which is extremely exciting and mm -hmm. it's super dramatic and like that's so where I'm at right now. I'm like, I just want drama. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of stuff coming up, but I'm excited about it. Go ahead. So my name is Caroline and I'm nine. Hi. I wanted to ask you, like, has anyone ever tried to block your confidence in dancing? Yeah, I think that that's common, not just in dancing, but in life, mm -hmm. period. Um, and, I, and I think that it's how you, you know, not to let those people's words really impact you 
And I think that it's like if you really step back and think like, who is this person in my life? Like, do they really, do I really know them? Do they really know me? Um, you know, just, I think that will help you to kind of distance yourself from like, you know, that it's not about you, it's about how they probably feel about themselves if they're saying those things. But I think it's important to just listen to the people that love you and care about you and, and support you and are there for you, that the, their words are the only ones that should matter. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, it's an honor being here. I really didn't know why I was here. <laughs> I'm from the Boys and Girls Club of Mount oh, Vernon. Yeah. And I heard that um, you used to go to the Boys and Girls Club. Yes, so I, I mean, I still know... go, but not as a member. But oh. yeah. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to know what is it that the Boys and Girls Club did for you yeah. in order to bring you where you are now? Yeah, um, so much. I mean, I think that was the first experience I had with mentorship was at my club. Um, you know, when my mom was raising us six children and she had like many jobs and, um, you know, it was like, where are my kids going to go? <laughs> so it was like, let's throw them in the club. <laughs> and it was just like a safe place for us to be. Um, but also then like once we were in, I think I was seven when I first started going. Um, once I was in there, it was like, oh, like I'm actually doing something productive. It wasn't just like, I mean, I became really good at shooting pool. <laughs> <laughs> But like I became mean, really good. I was like a seven-year-old pool shark. Um, but like I then I was like, oh, like they did tutoring mm -hmm. and um, like all of these like artistic things. I was kind. Of, I didn't really. I didn't really play any sport. But I was shooting hoops and like you know I can shoot a two-pointer. <laughs> um, but then that's where I discovered ballet. So that literally changed my life, being at a boys and girls club. Um, it was, you know, the local ballet teacher that was looking for diverse students and was offering a free ballet class on the basketball court in the gym of the boys and girls club. And that's where I took my first ballet class. So. And I'm still, you know, an ambassador and, and they mean so much to me. So I'm, I'm always giving back to them what they gave to me. Hi, good evening. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. This is Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Uh, so I ask myself this question all of the time, so I'm hoping you can at least give me some sort of tip. Okay. But um, as a white artist, specifically the owner of a theater company, is there some tip or anything you could do to help me make my space uh, a creative safe space and inclusive for everyone? That is amazing. Thank you so much of for course. that question and for caring to even, yeah ask it and want to do something. Um, I think it's really just about um, kind of, I think creating an environment where people are gonna feel comfortable to open up and give you advice or, um, you know, I think it's, it's important to ask questions and not be afraid to. And I think that when the proper environment is created, then people don't feel offended or like you're saying the wrong thing. Like I think that's the only way you can like move forward with having like a dialogue about race or um, inclusion, like diversity. I think that um, you just can't be afraid to really go there because if you're scared to say what you really feel, then you're never gonna get like a real answer. Um, I think it's important to have like representation within the school or, or, or that in that environment so that people feel like they can see themselves through different, you know, teachers or whoever it is, just to have like a really kind of like create that holistic environment of diversity that it's not just with the dancers or the students. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask you, um, did it ever bother you that there was such a little population of people in color in ABT? It did, and it still does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that, I think in the beginning when I was younger, you know, it's, it's hard to like see the bigger picture, or understand like the history and why it hasn't happened, and you just are like, angry. And um, I think just like over time and having the experience that I have that, um, I'm glad that I've been in the company for this long and have been a part of the ballet world for this long because it, it gives me like a broader view as to like how to change it. And I don't think that it's something that's going to happen in my lifetime, but I would love to like just continue to keep that like engine going 
And it's, again, I think the conversations are important to just keep having, you know, that it's not, it shouldn't be used, and I think that not to like put down the ballet world, but it's been used as kind of a prop, you know, this like, these diversity initiatives, and like, oh, we have one black person or one brown person, and like, we filled our quota, you know, it's like, it's about putting the spotlight on the ballet world in a way that like, they have to change. Um, you know, where it's kind of like, oh, we're exposed and, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, but I think that it's really just doing the research and putting in the work and trying to get to the root of the problem, you know, having access in communities that don't have the means, that um, don't feel like it's a part of their culture. Um, and you just have to kind of start from the ground up and, and bring diversity again to like all aspects of the arts and in a theater and in a, in a company. Hi. Um, so when like a dancer is on stage, there's an energy that enhances the performance do you and how do you bring that to the studio when you're rehearsing? Huh. Very interesting question. Um, I don't feel like that's ever been an issue for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's really funny. Um, oh, God, what is it? Lupe Serrano, she was a principal dancer with ABT. She was an incredible dancer. And she was a teacher of mine in the summer intensive and then in the studio company, mm. she coached me a lot. But the first thing that she said to me in my placement class for my first summer intensive at ABT, she looked at me and she said, this is class, this isn't a performance. Like, oh, okay. But I think that there was something that I, that's what I was like, just drawn to and what I loved about it was that like in my mind, like I never like saw the mirror to this day. It's like, I was just like always in this space of like, this is the first time in my life that I can just be in this creative environment where I'm not me, I'm not living in a motel, I'm not struggling and don't have food on the table or where we're gonna live. It was just like this amazing, creative, beautiful bubble. And so to me, it was always a performance. <laughs> but I think that it's like, it's, it's good, of course, you have to work on your technique and you have to think of class in a certain way, but I think that it's important not to kind of like shut off completely. Like when you're in class, you're just like a robot. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh God, now I have to like put on this you know, thing and become a character. But I think it's important just to always be thinking about those things, whether or not it's like over the top and like and you're gonna do it on stage, but it's something that's always in the back of your mind that that's equally as important, like the character and the role that you're playing is equally as important as the steps and the choreography. Um, I think we have time. We have time for just one more, last or la okay, last one. Okay. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you couldn't do ballet, what um, oh, other dance would you thing. do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never in a million years thought I would do ballet. So, um, you know, I think <laughs> I think before you know I even knew what ballet was, like there was not really anything that I wanted to do. Like I loved, I was choreographing and dancing to Mariah Carey. I think in my mind, I was like, I wanna be Mariah Carey. <laughs> but at this point, um, having had the experience in life that I've had as a classical dancer, um, if I couldn't dance, I think that I would be a chef. Really? Yeah. I love food and I love to cook and it's creative and it's like, like I love mm -hmm. it. Like mm -hmm. my husband's always like, you've been on your feet all day. Why do you want to be in the kitchen cooking? I'm like, cause it's fun and it's creative. And then like I make all this food and then I like put it in Tupperware. I'm like, all right, good night. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, a, it's this amazing like artistic outlet and release. I'm like, I don't really need to eat it all, but it's fun to make. <laughs> what do you, what is your favorite dish? What do you, I don't have your, one. Do you have a goat? You don't have a goat? Yeah, of course I have a goat too. Yeah, it's like a salmon dish yeah. that I make and I put it in the broiler yeah. and make my own marinade mm -hmm. with soy sauce and brown sugar and orange juice and white wine vinegar um, and scallions. And, <laughs> then, <laughs> and I let the salmon like sit in there and then I put it in the um, broiler and then I put, take the rest of the marinade and I let it thicken and then you pour it over. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to dinner after. <laughs> Everybody's going to go to dinner after that, that description. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Thank you. Thank, that's it for the questions. But thank you so much for your time thank you. today. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.